Did I say May favorites? It's April. Hey, it's Kelly. Welcome back to my channel where we talk all about gentle skincare and sometimes self-care. So if that's your vibe, please consider hitting subscribe. And you know what time it is. It's time for April faves. This is the video where I get to share with you all the skincare and beauty products that have been making a big difference to me and my skin this month. And I will say I almost said May faves. <laughs> it's just been that kind of month, but I do have a handful of new goodies to share with you. So if you are so ready, give the video a big thumbs up up and let's jump right into it. First up, I have to talk about the Soon Jung Centella Relief Toner. Now, I've actually been a longtime fan of the Etude House Soon Jung Relief Toner, the 5.5 toner, and I have actually recommended it here on my channel um, a couple of years back now, but it has been kind of like a longtime favorite. I just haven't used it in a long time. You know what it's like when you have so many favorites? Sometimes you just sort of forget about them for a while. So um, when I was shopping for skincare products, I think it was back in March, I was like, oh yeah, 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 I wanna get the Soon Jung toner again. And then I saw the Centella Relief toner. I'm like, wait a second, what's this? Um, they, I think it was about a year ago, maybe a little longer than that, the Soon Jung line released this Centella Relief toner. And really the main difference here from the original toner is that it contains more Centella. The original does have Centella. This one just has like more of it. And um, it's supposed to be a little bit more geared towards really calming and soothing the skin. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to try out this new one. And I tried it out and I really loved it. And a lot of the things I love about this toner really remind me of what I loved about the original. It's really watery. It's very replenishing and hydrating to my thirsty, thirsty skin. It's pure hydration. So there's no slip or body or moisture here. It doesn't like build up in thickness on the skin. It's just really, really light which my skin absolutely loves because you know I love to layer my toner up multiple times in my skincare routines and this is perfect for that. And it's so gentle. You know, it just feels really gentle and plain on my skin. And now some people would be like, plain, why Like, why is that a good thing? I don't want my skincare to be plain. I want it to be exciting. No, not with sensitive skin you don't. You want your skincare to be very low key. And that's what this feels like to me. It's just like a really basic hydrating toner. It it does everything I want it to do, nothing that I don't want it to do, and for me, that's perfect. Now, I have to say, while I do find the um, this toner to be calming, it's not like, bam, you know, it, irritation solved. It's not like that, but it definitely does have just like that little gentle soothing effect on my skin. I don't find it wildly calming, I will say that. And even though the ingredients are slightly tweaked here, I have no clue what the difference is <laughs> between these two toners. Maybe it's a little bit more calming. Maybe it's a little bit more soothing, although the original one in and of itself has a soothing, um, you know, gentle quality to it as well. So I'm not really sure why they have two really, really, really similar toners out there on the market. I mean, the textures are the same. The function is the same. The amount of hydration is the same. So if you you're on the fence about which one to choose. Honestly, I don't think there's a major difference here. I don't think you're going to miss out. I don't think one is better than the other. They're both equally good. And when it comes down to the fundamental basics of what a toner should be doing for your skin, both versions achieve. I mean, they, they wildly achieve that. But my skin this month has definitely been loving this one. So next up is the Son Rev Tri Bio Treatment Essence. And I got really excited when I picked this out from Soko Glam because number one, I remember when they introduced this product uh, as part of their curations like a year or two years ago. I can't remember how long it's been and I wanted to get it at the time and it just like, it was too expensive for me at the time, honestly. Um, but this time around, I got it like on sale and it was a little bit more comfortable for me to purchase. When I bought this, I realized I have not been using a first essence for a long time now, which is really out of the ordinary for me, right? You know I love a good essence. I love a good first essence. I think they can make a really nice uh, difference in your skincare routine. It just sort of naturally fell out of my routine. I'm a skincare reviewer. You know, my core skincare routine stays pretty much the same, but I am shuffling things in and out as reviews demand it, right, in videos and content. So it just sort of like happened and it didn't really register with me, but then all of a sudden I'm like, it's been 
months since I've used like our true first essence. Um, so I was excited to get one back into my skincare routine. And that's really what this is. This is a first essence that is using, you know, one of the most famous first essence ingredients, which is Galactomyces Ferment. So good for the skin. Um, it's great for brightening up your overall complexion, but it can work on like dark marks, hyperpigmentation. It's jam packed full of like minerals and vitamins, like for your skin, for the health of your moisture barrier. It can help increase hydration in the skin. It's just all over really, really good. Um, and it's a great well aging ingredient too. This formula also has like bifida ferment lysate in it. There's rice ferments in here. There's niacinamide and there's even some sea buckthorn um, fruit extract in here, which is like a natural form of vitamin C. So you can see there's a lot of fermented goodies. There's some great skin health goodies, some good brightening goodies. Do you see why I was excited about this and why I wanted it for a while? Now, if you're familiar with my videos about first essences, the main thing I will say is they are not toners. They are not going to deeply hydrate your skin. And this product doesn't deeply hydrate my skin either, but it just packs a little bit more hydration than those really, really thin thin essences. I'm thinking like the Misha um, Time Revolution First Treatment Essence SK2, Secret Key, Scenic. They all have a very thin, quickly absorbed kind of texture um, that almost like disappears on your skin. This is thin and quickly absorbed, but there's just a little bit more oomph, just a little bit more hydration. Um, and that just struck, you know, that struck me as being something a little bit different with this particular essence and so needed at this time. In the spring, my skin is just so prone to dehydration. The change in weather can really push my moisture barrier, but then I'm also dealing with allergies which increases inflammation in my whole body but it also you know can show up on my skin and I think that also like pushes the moisture barrier and increases my chances of dehydration that's to say I've been a little dehydrated this month and so I've been trying to get my hydration and my like you know plump skin wherever I can get it you know with the Soon Jung toner but even like a first essence that has a little bit more hydration it can make the difference in your skincare routine and it's been making a difference for me so just on that front my skin's been enjoying just a little bit extra that this is providing but I do feel like this is contributing to an overall healthy complexion and I do use a lot of other brighteners I'm not gonna lie like, you know, there's definitely other skincare that's contributing, but I have noticed like a nice healthy um, kind of like luminescence to my skin lately. Like just like that nice healthy lit from within, within glow. And I do, um, I do credit this essence with some of that. So it's been making me really happy. But beyond that, you know, there is something about skincare. There's sort of like a ritual about skincare that I think a lot of us um, really do love. And I think that's what makes us so interested in skincare and that it really is so important to us. It's that ritual. It's that consistency. It's that little moment of self-care in your day. And for me, I was missing that ritual of that first essence. I think my skincare routine had just become very much like just slap your skincare on as fast as possible. <laughs> you know, like just like get in the hydration, get in the moisture and get out. Because sometimes we go through cycles and we sort of forget the things that make us happy and that bring us joy, tiny little things in our day, right? So this was that little moment of joy that I brought, brought back into my skincare routine. And you know, sometimes skincare is more than just the, what the products do for your skin um, and what the ingredients are. Sometimes skincare is a moment. Sometimes it's a piece of joy. Sometimes it's a ritual. And so beyond the benefits, that's what this product brought to my skin this month. Next up, I want to talk about the Cetaphil Moisturizing Cream. Cetaphil is always a brand that I've just never really gotten into. Um, but I have been trying out quite a few different products from them. And this one I started using actually as a body lotion a few months ago and I've actually been enjoying it as a body lotion this is very creamy it's very moisturizing and it's very occlusive and so it works perfectly for my body skin now my face skin as you know it's a little bit more combination it can be a little bit trickier um, I can't just put the most occlusive creams on my face because I usually end up with clogged pores when that happens and congestion and it's not always the right fit for my skin but I do suffer with a lot of dryness in my U zone balanced out with some oil in my t-zone like it's complicated okay so i never thought that this was going to be a cream that i wanted to put on my face um, and this is a, a multi-purpose face and body cream you definitely can use this on your face i just never thought to because 
I felt like it was going to be too occlusive for me. Now, fast forward to springtime, right, where I'm saying I'm kind of suffering with a little bit more dehydration this month than I have um, in the last couple of months. And um, that's when I was like, hey, the Cetaphil moisturizing cream is super occlusive. Maybe I should try this. This is actually using dimethicone, petrolatum, their sweet almond oil in here. It's very occlusive. I um, tried this out as my final moisturizer um, before going to bed and it did help with the dehydration a lot. Would I use this year round? Will I maybe even be using this next month? Maybe not because I feel like it is just a little too occlusive for my skin when it's in a good balanced state, but it's not right now. And this is actually helping me so, so much. I even was like kind of playing around with it as like, like a slugging kind of situation, something a little bit lighter than like full on Aquaphor on top of like CeraVe or Ileune. It works like that too. So I've been enjoying this a lot and you know, when I pick out my products for favorites videos, it's about the products that made a difference in my skin this month. And that's what this did. It really helped solve the dehydration and the transepidermal water loss that I was having at nighttime, which was kind of driving me nuts because you know, when your skin gets dehydrated, it starts to feel a little irritated and itchy. And I was like, oh, this is bugging me so, so much. Um, and this just kind of like brought my skin back to, to neutral, back into balance and helps protect it. So it's probably going to stay in my routines as a body cream for sure. But in emergency um, times when dehydration does get a little bit bad. And for me, that's definitely in seasonal transitions like now, this is so handy. So you may have noticed that I've been using more mineral sunscreen over the last month or so, which is a little bit out of the ordinary for me. I will admit I am such a chemical sunscreen girl. I mean, that's just what feels comfortable for me to wear. And that is what works with my skin tone the best, honestly. Um, I just feel like with mineral sunscreen, there's just so much baggage with it. It, and there's just so many compromises that you have to make that I just, I don't like to go there. You know what I mean? Um, that's just my preference. Uh, mineral sunscreens generally make my skin feel a little bit dry. I tend to be sensitive to the zinc and titanium filters, which do have a natural like sebum controlling ability, which isn't a good match for my skin. And of course, white cast it's always like borderline on my skin tone. Like it, it can make me look kind of gray and really like sickly looking the white cast, like the, the creams can sometimes bunch up around my eyebrows and my hairline. It's not worth it. That being said, <laughs> I had a little bit of sensitivity to chemical sunscreens lately. My seasonal allergies usually go dormant in the dead of winter. Um, I'm not usually having the issues that I, that I do. And then the spring comes, the snow melts, everything is damp. Camp, but yeah, it just like intensifies the allergies, the outdoor allergies for me. And my eyes were so itchy and dry and like, gloopy and like really, really irritated and chemical sunscreen, which I usually have no problem with was making that worse around my eye area. I just became more sensitive to it because my immune system was on fire. So I switched over to some mineral sunscreens and luckily I had been testing a few for video. So that was that was like good timing. The first one is the MD Solar Sciences Mineral Defense Sunscreen. Now, I've talked about this a few times on my channel, but I always say I did sponsored content with this brand. I absolutely did. I did a YouTube short and I did an Instagram post with this brand. I am no longer sponsored. It was a one-time thing. That was the content. That's what was sponsored. I just happened to really love this. And honestly, I wouldn't take a sponsorship for a product that I didn't absolutely love anyways. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I really like this because this is one of the comfiest mineral sunscreens I've ever used. This really doesn't dry my skin out the way other ones do. And I think it's the way they formulated this because they've really focused on the barrier and they really focused on lipids. And you know, that's what like works with my skin so well. Ceramides, cholesterol, fatty acids, right? That is what's in this sunscreen along with the zinc. And I think it's just the right balance. And so I found this to be really comfy to wear. It's got this really gorgeous texture too, which is not something I would normally say about mineral sunscreen. It's quite 
it's almost like whipped. It's really light and airy. It spreads so nicely. It's not that thick, chalky stuff. It's got really great spread. There is a white cast here. You can't get away from it. Um, it's not that bad on my skin tone. And like I said, you know, with my eyes being so allergic and like not being like able to tolerate sunscreen, I will give up, you know, like the, the no white cast thing. I will deal with a little bit of white cast in order to be able to wear the sunscreen. So that's where I'm at with, with the white cast with this. It is noticeable but it's not bad and I do feel like after it's been on my face for like 10 minutes or so I feel like that initial white cast it even calms down just a little bit and this didn't really bunch up around my eyebrows or anything or look like super like obvious on my skin. Now there's one other one that I want to mention that I've also been liking especially as the temperatures have been going warmer and that is the Isentree Natural Sun Cream. This is from their Hyaluronic Acid line. I did do a dedicated review so you can check it out right up here if you want to but I actually really like this too and this is much lighter than the MD Solar Sciences Mineral Sunscreen. Um, it's not mattifying but it's it's a lot thinner and it's got like a nice neutral non-shiny finish to it that I think is going to work for like pretty much everybody honestly um but especially if you're on the more oily side and you don't want a super moisturizing sunscreen but you like mineral filters like this is so good um and I've been testing a lot of sunscreens lately and um a lot of them do make you greasy in the middle of the afternoon, but what struck me about this one is it doesn't. So when it's getting really warm and my like T-zone is getting activated and I'm producing more oil, this is a nice one to go towards because I know it's not going to make me look like really greasy in the middle of the afternoon or like get kind of funky with my makeup or anything. So when I know I want something lighter, I'll pick up this one. Um, right now, I'm more going towards the MD Solar Sciences just because like my skin wants a little bit more of that moisture, but it is getting warmer and I am looking greasier so <laughs> I might shift a little bit into the isn't tree I will say the allergic kind of like reaction that I was having around my eye area I'm not really having that anymore but I've just been so like impressed with mineral sunscreens actually working for my skin always keep your options open always keep your mind open because you never know when the thing you thought you didn't like is going to actually help you out in the end and I want to finish out the month talking about self-care you know this is my other passion right next to skincare and it's something that I do like to talk about in these monthly videos just sharing like something that I've learned on my self-care journey or something that I just feel super compelled to share and something that I actually feel super super compelled to share with you this month is my podcast is back. That's right. The journey, a self-care podcast is back for season two. I took a little bit of a longer break than I planned to, but I needed it. And I gave myself the permission um, that I needed to take a break from the work of producing a podcast, which is a lot. Um, I didn't really know that going into season one. I know that now, um, but I need a little bit of a break and I also need a little bit of time to really prepare for season two. And I'm so excited because, you know, in this season, I really want to more deeply explore the topics of self-care, especially talking about things like burnout and boundaries and really Really, you know setting up your self-care so not only that your cup is filled but that you're able to share that with others that you're able to build community by taking care of yourself you know I think that sometimes we shy away from self-care because we kind of get that idea that it's selfish and really there's two steps to self-care the first part is taking care of yourself and the second part of self-care that we don't talk about a lot is taking care of our community taking care of each other and the only way we can really really fully show up and take care of others and be there for them and uplift them is when we are taken care of first, right? So I really want to talk about that and explore that on this season and, you know, go further into my journey, healing burnout, um, and my, my personal self-care journey. So I'm really excited about season two and, um, you can catch the first episode. It's actually up right now. That spoke to me so much because I think that's been my journey too, is like linking the different parts of like the mind yeah. the body the spirit into one you know mm -hmm. into one kind of practice or one kind of like routine or something that kind of fulfills each area or nourishes each area yeah, yeah. And th those needs you know they're not always equal sometimes I need more you know yeah. my body or spiritually than I do with my mind and so I love that you touched on more of that holistic 
Um, Because that is, that is part of our discovery process too. It's Mm -hmm. like, what do we need to feel whole? So if you've ever loved, you know, the messages that I like to bring to you at the end of these uh, monthly favorites videos, and you want to dive deeper into soulful mind, body, and spirit self-care, please um, check out the podcast. It's available wherever, wherever you listen to podcasts. And the podcast now has an Instagram page, which I think is going to be a great place for us to really gather as community and talk about the episodes and about self-care and really, you know, have a chance to hear what's on your mind as well. So I'm going to put links to the podcast and to the podcast Instagram page in the description box below. Um, And definitely make sure that you're following the podcast so you don't miss out on any of the new episodes because I've got some juicy ones coming up for you. So now it's your turn to share with me all of your favorite products from April. Let me know in the comment box below. And if you love this video, but you have not hit subscribe yet, you made it all the way to the end of the video and you haven't hit subscribe, like please do consider hitting subscribe before you leave. I release a lot of new videos just like this one. So consider turning on the notifications too so you're never out of the loop when the new videos drop. I hope you are healthy, happy, and safe, and I can't wait to see you in the next video. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.